Greetings from Watanaya Society. This is Nohaina Hassanin. I'll be talking to you today about Watanaya Society's response to the COVID-19 pandemic by strengthening, strengthening the capacities of caregiver, caregivers to promote child protection. Watanaya Society was founded in 2008 to create a future of equal opportunities for children and youth without parental care by unifying the standards of care. To give you a little bit of context, the most prevalent alternative care option in Egypt is residential care. Unfortunately, there's a lot of discrepancy inside residential home facilities or care homes because they're managed by civil uh, organizations and supervised by the government. So it's really dependent on the quality of care received, really dependent on the manager's beliefs or knowledge. So, and oftentimes they lack the basic skills and knowledge to provide children with a healthy environment. As a result, with the Nea Society since its foundation, uh, started to unify the standards started developing quality standards for alternative care sector in order to guarantee that all children in care homes receive the same care, the qual same quality care they deserve. The journey of the standards was a partnership between Autonomous Society, the Ministry of Social Solidarity, and NGOs and INGOs. They were mandated in 2014. Tanay Society, since its foundation as well, was one of the leading organizations in the reform of the alternative care section in Egypt, has been assisting the government in its journey of deinstitutionalization as well. In 2017, in response to the child protection violations that took place in the care homes and from the quality standards of care, Tanay Society developed a child protection toolkit contextualized specifically to the alternative care sector and since then has been conducting trainings holistically with different stakeholders. As you all know, the pandemic has put a lot of children at risk of child protection violations. As a result, Autonomia Society started by a dialogue with the caregivers, with the managers, with the care homes to really identify what, what could we do, what could we do to help each other as an alternative care sector really get through this uncertain time and cope. One of the main uh, recommendations were, was having online training sessions for the caregivers to assist them in dealing with the children. Other recommendations were, were, were conducting online child protection workshops and that's what we did. We conducted five child protection workshops that had more information about the COVID-19 virus and how children could protect themselves from it and uh, other activities about raising children's awareness about physical and sexual abuse. In, in terms of raising the capacities of uh, caregivers, Otanaya Society partners with experts in child protection, um, in child protection and in child psychology to give a series of psychoeducational interactive sessions um, to the caregivers. They were 10 uh, sessions all in all. We really wanted to identify the, the, the effect of these sessions. We had the hypothesis that if caregivers were more aware of their emotions, they would be able to cope with the pandemic in a, uh, and, and cope with the uncertainty, and this will lead to decreasing child protection violations. So the evaluation question was, to what extent did the program really help decrease the possibility of child protection violations? It was a convenient sampling. We used a questionnaire that had qualitative and quantitative data and had only one requirement that the participant must have attended at least two training sessions through the months of May, June, and July. 55% of the participants um, did answer the questionnaire and the average amount of sessions attended was six sessions. The majority were females and the average age was between 25 and 34. There were three recurring themes in the analysis. First, the caregiver's awareness of their emotions. They're, they're able to identify their emotions and they're able to cope. Thus leading to them more, listening more to the children and empathizing and understanding what the children are going through, which will lead them to support and help the children in a better way. The first theme was really highly evaluated. As you can see, all the scores were more than four. Perhaps the most significant uh, result here is that caregivers identified that self-care is the basis of caring and protecting children, which was very uncommon in this profession in Egypt. Caregivers also, one of the main things that they stated was that they were able to actively listen to the children, understand what they're going through, which, uh, as you can see, is also highly evaluated. 
finally, because they were able to listen and understand their feelings, they were able to support the children and give them the support and help that they needed, and even conduct activities to the children to, so that they don't spend their days doing nothing. Uh, and uh, finally, we asked the question to really, for the participants to reflect on a situation that occurred in the past four months and when the child misbehaved, what, di what discipline method did they use? And as you can see here, the majority actually used the disciplining method of talking to the child and making the child understand what did they do wrong instead of hitting or scolding the child. So one of the participants said, talking to the child is the best way to teach them how to face their problems and cope with these problems. And these are the, some quotes of people, uh, one, the participants, uh, identifying how it was very helpful for them to uh, attend the sessions. Finally, it's evident uh, from the preliminary analysis, we can see here that the caregivers were more aware of their emotions, were able to deal with uncertainty. Majority of the caregivers were able to empathize with the children and understand their emotions. And the majority of caregivers were able to reassure and support the children, as well as the majority of caregivers were able to use disciplinary methods that did not violate children's rights. We learned from this, um, act, uh, from this uh, process that starting a dialogue is a must, especially in situations that are uncertain. Mobilizing and maximizes res maximizing resources is essential to make the best possible impact. And helping caregivers identify with their emotions and cope with uncertainty is a must in order to help um, decrease the possibility of child protection violations. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions that you have.